Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey McEwen and I am one of the lawyers here at Legal Beagle and today I want to tell you some hot tips for why you might want to think about getting a family trust. So let's get started. The first reason you might want to think about getting a family trust is pure and simple asset protection. So when you put property into a trust, the trustees become the owner of the property. And what the trustees do is they hold the property on trust for the benefit of the beneficiaries. And that's a very long-winded legal way of saying that the property is not your personal property anymore. You may still be able to get the benefit of the property, for instance, you might still be able to live in the house, but it's not actually legally owned by you. What that means is that if you've got something going on in your life in which you owe a personal liability to someone, for example, if you've just started up a new business and you may have creditors to do with that new business venture, your assets are protected from those creditors. For example, you might want to put your family home in a trust so that if a new business venture happens to fail, your family home is not going to be affected by that. Okay, the second reason you might want to think about getting a family trust is it gives you the opportunity to put aside money for special reasons. For example, you might want to set up a family trust uh, for the purposes of providing funds for the education of your children or your grandchildren. And the benefit of having a family trust is that you can actually set up the way that the trust operates so that there are specific rules about when and why a child will actually be eligible to access those funds. And so what it means for you is that you've been able to put funds away for a specific cause and you know that the funds are actually going to be used for that reason and you're not just throwing money away. The third reason that you might want to think about getting a family trust is because it protects you from potential relationship property claims. As we said before, when a property is owned by a trust, it is not your personal property, it is owned by a separate entity altogether. What that means is that if you have been with your partner long enough to be considered a de facto relationship or if the two of you get married, your assets will still be protected from any claim from your partner because they don't have any claim over your trust property. This can also be used as a good protective tool by parents who think that their child is in a relationship with a dodgy character. They can put their child's inheritance away in a trust knowing that the dodgy partner won't get their hands on that money. Speaking of inheritance, that brings us to our fourth top tip, which is that it protects your estate from having claims made against it. Okay, so a little background for this is that when you die, hopefully you will have written a will and that will have all the instructions as to what you want to be done with your estate. However, if you have left somebody out of your will who thinks that they deserved to be in there, they can actually bring a claim against your estate. When somebody brings a claim against your estate, depending on the outcome of the situation, the court may actually be able to change who gets what under your will, and that may not reflect your intentions at all. But as we've been talking about, assets that are owned by the trust are not your personal assets, and what that means is that anything that is owned by your trust is not actually covered by your will. So that means that if someone brings a claim on your estate, good for them. There might not actually be anything in your personal estate for them to claim against because it's all been protected by a trust. Alright, our fifth reason is that having a trust can actually help you with your retirement plans. As you get older, you may start to think about wanting to move into a retirement home. And for a lot of people, the way that they can actually afford to go about this is by getting what's called a residential care subsidy from the IRD. When the IRD is assessing whether or not you're eligible to receive a residential care subsidy, they will both means test and asset test to see what your financial position is. It means, you know, if you own a family home and a holiday home or something in your personal names, the IRD can turn around and say, you don't need our help. You've got plenty of money right there. However, when those same assets are owned in the trust and not in your personal name, that takes it out of the equation for the IRD's asset testing. All right, obviously I can't give you this spiel about the advantages of getting a family trust without outlining some warnings as well. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know is that you can't just transfer assets into a trust with the intention of hiding them. 
So as we mentioned earlier, you may want to put, for example, your family home into a trust if you've got creditors um, in a business venture. However, if you've already got a creditor breathing down your neck and trying to call up your obligations on your personal liability, that is not the right time to go and start shoving assets in a trust because that will very quickly be overturned by the court. The other thing that you need to know, which is to do with the residential care subsidy, is that if you put too much stuff into the trust too quickly, the IRD can come along and be like, hey, remember that time that you put all that stuff in the trust? Let's just count that. The way to avoid that is to gift your assets into the trust at a rate of $27,000 per year. If you gift more than $27,000 a year to your trust, the IRD can come along and be like, hey, no, that's too much, we're going to count that in our means testing and asset testing as well. And that can affect whether or not you're eligible to get the residential care subsidy. And so that's our video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please note that everything that I've just talked about has been in general terms only, and you should always go to your lawyer to get advice specific to your situation before doing anything with your trust. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions or if you've got any ideas on topics or videos that you'd like to see in the future, please let us know.